Hello and welcome to the Comlux Instant Review. Please visit comluxflashcards.com for daily podcasts and lectures on acing the Comlux and USMLE board exam. I want to talk about physiological anemia of infancy. Keep in mind that generally there's an intrauterine hypoxia that stimulates erythropoietin. High hemoglobin at birth downregulates erythropoietin. So what happens is that there's a progressive drop in hemoglobin over a two to three month period until the tissue oxygen needs are greater than their delivery. And it's exaggerated in preterm births and earlier, usually leading to a level of hemoglobin where it's seven to nine milligrams per deciliter. In terms of infants, no problems, but um, you know generally they don't need treatments. Preterm infants usually need transfusions depending on the degree of illness and gestational age. So what is iron deficiency anemia and why is it relevant to your pediatric board exam? Well because patients will typically present with complaint of a condition where they have you know, pallor, irritability, lethargy, tachycardia, systolic murmurs, and long term they can have neurodevelopmental effects as well. So some of the things you want to look at are consider that you know these patients will definitely have a decrease in bone marrow hemosiderin and then there there's a decrease in serum ferritin also causing a decrease in serum iron and transferrin saturation leading to an increase in the TIBC, an increase in the fetal erythrocyte protoporphin FEP and overall you'll see a microcytosis with hypochromia and poikilocytosis. There's a decreased MCV and an increase in RDW. The bone marrow usually will show no sustainable iron and the treatment here is going to be ferrous salts, limit milk, you know, increase dietary iron intake, um, and continue iron for like eight weeks after the blood value normalizes and the reason it's important here is because adolescents are susceptible and high um, you know requirements during growth spurts can be delayed if they don't have the proper amount of iron. Also there's mucosa abnormalities of the gastroenterology tract and there's you know leakage of blood which can develop further. Patients who have a consumption of large amounts of cow milks and foods uh, not enriched with iron are more susceptible to iron deficiency anemia. So that was a quick overview of iron deficiency anemia. Now I want to talk about lead poisoning. First thing is clinical appearance. It's highly important that you know how patients present. They will have the key findings which include anorexia, pain, vomiting, and constipation. There's also, you know, hyperactivity in younger kids. Also, aggression is very commonly seen. Sometimes patients have cognitive and developmental dysfunction, especially long-term. And there's increase in cerebral edema, intracranial pressure increases, leading to, you know, lethargy, seizures, and just a general change in mentation. It's more common in older housing. You, and you want to make the diagnosis here by looking at the screening for targeted blood lead testing levels at 12 and 24 months, then the confirmatory venous sample, which is the gold standard blood lead level, and x-rays of the long bones, such as dense lead lines are also helpful. Also radiopaque flex in the intestinal tracts. Microcytic hypochromic anemia with increases in FEP and basophilic stippling are very common and the treatment is usually chelation therapy and that depends on the lead level so if a patient presents to you with um, a 10 to 14 lead level then you want to evaluate the source and provide education and repeat the blood lead level in three months however if the value is uh, 45 to 70 then you start DMSA like succimer oral and if it's greater than 70 then immediate hospitalization plus a two drug treatment um, is recommended such as EDTA plus either DMSA or BAL. Those are the two key drugs that you can use. So um, again DMSA stands for dimercaptosuccinide acid and BAL stands for dimercapinol. 
So that was an overview of treating lead poisoning and how to make the diagnosis of anemia, especially iron deficiency anemia, um, in pediatric patients. Let's now talk about congenital pure red cell anemia, also called black fan diamond syndrome. Usually a child will present with pallor and you look for signs of short stature with craniofacial abnormalities, uh, defects in the upper extremities, and patients typically will have an increased RBC program cell death causing their anemia. The labs here are markedly different because they'll have a low reticulocyte count, increased serum iron, increased HBF, hemoglobin F, increased RBC adenosine deaminase. And that's a key sign. If you see that on the board exam question, immediately you should think about congenital bure red cell anemia. And the treatment is corticosteroids with uh, transfusions and dexafaraxamine. Uh, splenectomy is recommended later on. And the definitive treatment is with stem cell transplantation. Next, I would like to talk about congenital pancytopenias, most common of which is going to be Fanconi's anemia, where you have absent hypoplastic thumbs and typically all the cell lines are depressed. In Black Fan Diamond Syndrome, you had triphalangeal thumbs with a pure RBC deficiency. Here in congenital pancytopenia, most commonly, which is Fanconi anemia, there's spontaneous chromosomal breaks causing short stature and an absent or hypoplastic thumb, hyperpigmentation, and cafe au lait spots. Patients' uh, lab values will show macrocytosis, increased hemoglobin F, decreased uh, WBCs and platelets, as well as bone marrow hypoplasia. So the diagnosis is made by bone marrow aspiration, and um, complications include AML or other forms of cancer. And the treatment is with bone marrow transplant, which is definitive, but corticosteroids and androgens are also helpful. Now, some acquired anemias include transient erythroblastopenia of childhood, where patients typically have a nonspecific viral infection, but not par parvovirus, and they develop decreased reticulocytes, bone marrow precursors are decreased, and there's a normal MCV and HBF, which is again also normal. Keep in mind that the hemoglobin F is increased um, in both congenital pure red cell anemia and Fanconi's anemia. And um, here in this transient erythroblastopenia of childhood, it's um, normal. There's also a normal um, RBC ADA level, which is different than um, the Black Fan Diamond Syndrome. Recoveries with one to two months and medications are usually not helpful, but keep in mind the lab values and that can help you differentiate and make your diagnosis. Anemia of chronic disease, well, that's typically based upon, um, you know, fixing the underlying cause. Patients may need some erythropoietin and on lab values you see mainly um, a hemoglobin of six to nine with uh, iron, which is, you know, low without an increase in TIBC and ferritin may be normal or slightly increased. Patients, um, you know, most hype, normal chromic and normal acidic, but they can also be mildly microcytic and hypochromic as well. And the reticulocytes can be normal or slightly decreased. So that was a quick review of some of the most common um, anemias you'll see on the board exam for your pediatric review. Please visit comlexflashcards.com for additional lectures on how to prepare for the COMLEX and USMLE board exam. Good luck in your preparation.